Hello everyone, I found a nice collection of German veteran statements on the Katusha and since some of them are at times quite contradicting, I thought, well, let us put them in context and also compare their statements to those of historians. Note that Germans called the Katusha or better Katushias, since there were many variants of them, Stalin organ. Stalin organ. The following quotes are from a collection made by the historian Craig Lufer where he compiled various statements by German veterans over the years and also provided their respective unit. Note most of these statements are about experiences during 1941 and 1943. I usually will point out when there is a difference. Before we head on in, some basic information about the Katusha. It's a multiple rocket launcher. Quite often these were mounted on trucks, but there were also some mounted on tanks or towed variants. The variance in terms of caliber ranged from 82mm to 300mm rockets, whereas the ranges also varied widely from 1900m up to 11800m. The first saw action in 1941 and newer variants are used up to this day. Note that Katusha was not the official name. The most novel and terrifying weapons in the Red Army artillery inventory were the multiple rocket launchers, officially guards mortars, but popularly referred to as Katushas. First introduced as battalions of secret weapons in mid-July 1941, by early 1943 the Red Army included hundreds of guards mortars organized into divisions, brigades, regiments and separate battalions. Before we look at German veteran statements, I want to point you to something that might be of your interest, namely our crowdfunding campaign on the translation of the Sturmgewehr 44 Assault Platoon Tactics pamphlet. For more information, follow the link. Now let us look at the statements by the veterans. We start with O. Bese from the 110th Infantry Division. He noted, I did come across the Stalin organ too. Its impact was very inaccurate and so it wasn't particularly feared. So far as I can remember, I came across it only rarely. This goes in hand with what Beim Dieke from the 2nd Panzer Division noted. We did not think that the Stalin organ was dangerous. We could get away from it. But the Russian infantry was a dangerous opponent indeed. But then we have Bergert from the 56th Infantry Division who notes, The Stalin organ were field weapons and the five were six different mortars as well as the versatile T-34. So why these different perceptions? Well, there are several issues at work. Let us look at it step by step. First, the Katusha was inaccurate. Although widely inaccurate, these rocket launchers were ideally suited to saturate a wide area with massed, intense, to often inaccurate fire. As such, it depends on the situation, which could be particularly lucky or unlucky. If one or one's comrades had particularly strong losses or a strong emotional response to one weapon, that might stick over the years. And there were also more logical explanations as well. Rocket launchers can deliver a large payload in a short amount of time. This means if you are caught in the open with infantry or soft-skinned vehicles and the weapon strike is accurate, the losses might be substantial, yet if you are in cover, those rockets usually do rather little. Especially against dug-in troops, their performance is even more limited than artillery since the rockets usually don't penetrate the earth, nor is it possible to use ricochet firing, which was a method used by the artillery men to make the shell explode in mid-air. The primary targets for the multiple rocket launchers have remained largely unchanged since the introduction of the BM-13. Troops in the open or in light field fortifications and concentration areas for man and material. The introduction of larger and longer range rockets and new warheads expanded and improved the effectiveness of the multiple rocket launchers but didn't fundamentally change their nature. One veteran mentioned that it was a rather rare weapon. Some might disagree here, but remember most of these veterans talked about the 1941 and 1942 experience. As such, this information seems to be spot on with what Glantz notes. Front and Army commanders employed the rocket dispersed in penny parcel fashion, during the chaotic and often desperate fighting between Molensk and Moscow from September through November 1941, largely negating their potential combat impact. So let us look at some more statements by veterans. Volger of the 252nd Infantry Division, his statement seems to disagree. The Stalin Orga was vile, gemein, if you can put it that way, because it could fire off a huge number of rockets. On top of that, there was the unpleasant howling, and it covered a wide area. In the winter outside, 
Moscow admit the life of the frontline soldier. Hell. The problem here is what time frame is winter here? Glenn's know the problems from September to November 1941 with the piecemeal fashion, but in November 1941 there was a change. Additionally, some of the rocket artillery was assigned around Moscow, as noted by Armstrong. Despite their potency in combat, however, by November 1941 a change in Katusha tactics seemed necessary. By late fall, 33 of the 59 Katusha battalions in service were concentrated in the Moscow defense zone. As such, the statement by Folger makes a lot of sense, especially if we consider that the Wehrmacht won on its last legs for the Battle of Moscow, as noted by Stahel. The initial successes of the Soviet counteroffensive owed more to the German overextension, exhaustion and lack of mobility than the operational proficiency of the attacking Red Army units. There are also some very well reflected, balanced and insightful assessments by veterans on the Stalin Orgel as well. This one from A. Meyer of the 106th Infantry Division stands out. The effect of the Stalin Orgel was contradictory. It had more of an effect on morale than an explosive effect, because the sheer number of rockets in the attacks was demoralizing. For example, the rockets during the attack at the Donis River caused hardly any damage to the igloos constructed by our soldiers. This is an aspect that is very often ignored, probably mainly due to a lack of personal experiences, movies and computer games. But it cannot be stretched enough how important the moral effect of weapons is on the battlefield. Note this was very similar to the effect of air attacks, here referring to the German experience in Poland 1939. Interestingly, the Luftwaffe commentators were willing to admit that the material effect of such attacks were not impressive. Rather, it was the impact on the enemy morale that resulted in significant accomplishments. Another very reflected and interesting view is the following. This veteran also refers to his experience of 1944 as well. As such, his statement balances out the impact of the Stalin Orgel on combat operations in 1941 and 1942. The Stalin Orgel was according to my observations without significance in winter 1941-1942 during the battles outside Moscow and around Rochev. It was only 1943-44 during combat operations around Orel and Kursk and along the rest of the Central Front that we found that the Stalin organ with its rapid rate of fire exhibited a major impact. According to Glantz, in early 1943 the Soviets had developed the M31 rocket launcher system, which was far more powerful than the M30. This weapon was produced in large quantities as well. There were also divisions raised that contained a total of 864 launchers. The divisions were able to fire devastating single volleys of 3456 rockets. Additionally, further reorganization, centralization and concentration of these rocket launchers were adopted based on the experiences of the winter campaign 1942-1943. The results were far higher density of these weapons in the Battle of Kursk, according to Armstrong. In the extensive Battle of Kursk, in July 1943, Red Army forces put to the successful use approximately 496 BM-8 and BM-13 combat launchers. Command the Guards Mortar units who reported to the command of the Red Army Artillery and Stavka underscored that the density of rocket artillery on one kilometer of the front in the Kursk salient was two to three times higher than in the Battle of Stalingrad. Additionally, at that point, both in terms of tactics and equipment, the weapon system had matured. This in combination with far larger number of these launchers thus confirms the observation of the veterans. To summarize, although I frequently see people noting that the statements by veterans disprove or contradict the accounts of historians, I disagree for the most part. The main problem is that some people don't put the statements of veterans and or historians on a matter in proper context and look at them as single instances. Furthermore, most of these veterans accounts are often out of documentaries that generally remove the context of long interviews and complex statements. I know that they do. So the same for historians as well. This editing for cheap effect often creates distorted and oversimplified view by clickbait artists that is an insult to the veterans, the historians and any nuanced view on the matter. Big thank you here to all my Patreon subscribe star supporters for allowing to produce videos that rely on research, nuance and context instead of cheap editing. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Special thanks to Matthew for sending me Lufa's book on Barbarossa and also to Andrew for reviewing the script. As always, sources are listed in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.